Welcome, this is Jake with Genesis Rage, and in this episode we'll be going over how to configure the database manager for SmartFox. There are some prerequisites for this. First, you will need to have the JDBC driver installed for SmartFox, which we went over in a previous episode. If you have not yet watched that episode, click the annotation on screen now to do so. Second of all, you will need to have a MySQL database set up and running. If you're doing local development, and you are running Windows like I am. You can get one set up real easily by going to usbwebserver.net. Come over to Downloads, and I recommend the USB Web Server version 8.2 in English. Uh, the, you can use the version 8.5, but there is still some problems with that, so that's why I do recommend this one here and you can either open or save the file. It's just a zip file which you'll extract that, which I have already done so. In the zip file you'll find this USB webserve.exe. Just run that file. And if any firewall settings pop up, uh, make sure to accept that. When you do start it up, you'll see these two green check marks here. However, we will have to change some settings before we get started. So in here, you do want to change the Apache port from 8080 to 8081. The reason for this is that SmartFox runs on 8080, so we can't run two on the same port. For the MySQL port, I recommend changing this to 3306, which is actually the default port for MySQL. We can save this, and I'll say oh, saving and restarts. And if you're quick enough, you can click over here and you'll see that it is restarting on its own. And you can click this PHP My Admin link here. However, I do I want to open up in my browser I already have open, so I'm just going to come up here. And it's just localhost 8081 slash PHP My Admin. And for the default settings are right here. The username is root and password is USBW. So I'll just type that in real quick. And when you load this, it does come pre-installed with this test database right here. There is no tables in here, but that's not a problem. We do need at least one database, though. If you do not have one, you will actually have to create one. Okay, that error was just because I forgot to clear the cache before recording the video. So if you do not have a database already, you just come in here type in the name of the database and create it. You won't have to create any tables for that though. You just need to have the database itself. So I'm going to get rid of some of these windows here. It's going to minimize all these. And we'll start up the SmartFox server. All right, now that's ready. You want to log into your admin tool. Right, and here we'll type in the password. I did have to turn off the mouse highlighter in order for it to work in this admin tool. But I am using the default password, which is fine for me right now. But you want to go into your administration modules and go to zone configurator. And I'll click on basic examples right here. And over in the data manager, database manager tab, we'll go ahead and activate this. And here we need a database driver class. We need to type in com dot mysql dot jdbc dot driver you want to make sure that the d of driver is actually capitalized and for the connection string this is going to be jdbc colon mysql colon slash slash and for the host we are running it locally so localhost colon and the port number was 3306 another slash and now the database name now with USB web server it already had the original database of test so I'm going to use that one and username and password for the database so that was root and the password was USBW by default now for this test SQL we do need to put something in here However, I want to show what happens if there is not a connection to the database, so I'm going to actually t put something in the test SQL that will not work. So go show tables. 
and this will not actually work. But we'll, we'll submit that. We'll restart the server. And when the server starts up, which whatever zone you're using, in this case basic examples, you'll see this db.sfs database manager that there's an exception here basically saying that there is an error. So if you cannot connect to the database, this will show up. If everything works, however, is that it will not show anything here. To show an example of that, we'll come back into the database manager. So we'll log back in here real quick. And again, come into the zone configurator. Double click our basic examples, come into the database manager, and now we're going to change this test SQL string to something that will actually work. For here we're going to select count and we'll put an asterisk here. We're going to select that from information underscore schema dot tables. And now we'll submit that and restart the server. And now if you notice under here, the basic examples, we do not have that error anymore. And because there is something in that SQL test and there's no error here, we know that it did successfully connect to the database. And that will wrap up this episode. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below or send an email to jake at genesisrage.net.